All right, what's going on guys? In this video, we are going over the basics of doing a little bit of UI design in Procreate by designing a weather app. Um, now I've been talking about UI design in my graphic design classes for the uh, for starting this week, and UI UX design is an interesting thing because it's uh, two different things that often get talked about as one. UI design is user interface, which basically talks about the interface, the visuals, the visual identity, and the visual branding of different apps and websites. And then UX is user experience, which is how the user navigates. So if UI is like the little buttons that you can click on in Snapchat, the little icons you can click on in the app and the visuals that Snapchat gives you. UX is where things are laid out, where the messages are versus where you find your profile information versus where you find your stories. So we're gonna do a little bit of UI design in Procreate. Now, as I scroll through some examples from other designers, I've got, their, uh, I've got the designer's names up in the top left of each uh, image. UI design is typically not done in Procreate. There's a number of other apps such as Figma or uh, Adobe XD is a new one that I've been playing with a lot. Though my graphic designers have been recently doing a lot in Procreate and really flexing their skills, so I'd like to keep going with that. Um, I just looked up a bunch of professional designers to find out or some inspiration or some ideas of other mock-ups of weather apps to see what other see what ideas are out there really and figure out what I would want to do for my own design. Now, it is currently a nice fall day uh, in November here, post-Halloween, so I think I'll do one for a fall looking. So for my designers, what I have in this folder too is uh, two mock-ups, one for an iPhone, one for a Samsung Galaxy. I literally found these just by Googling iPhone mock-up. And what basically is, is a fake photo of a smartphone with a blank screen that I can then design on to show what the app would look like if it were actually on a phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this one. On Google Drive, I send a copy and then save image. And then I'm gonna jump into Procreate. Now I am using my own personal iPad rather than my school iPad. Um, I, left it, I left it there, but I promise um, I'm using a felt tip stylus now. The old rubber tip stylus from the dollar store broke as dollar store styluses do. Um, so I stole this felt tip one from GDF's desk, do not tell her. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and open that photo in Procreate. Um, and it looks like this. Now, the first thing I wanna do, this is the cool little trick here, is I just wanna paint on that gray space. I just wanna paint where the screen is. I don't wanna draw anything outside of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it, create a new layer, fill that layer, and clipping mask everything to that layer. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So the selection tool up here with that little S, I click on that. If down at the bottom where I'm currently on freehand, if I switch that to automatic, it kind of works like the magic wand tool does in Photoshop, if you're familiar. If I tap on one color or one area, tap on that, that whole area turns black. It actually inverts. After I tap, if I click and drag anywhere on the screen, click and drag, I can see that I'm changing the selection threshold. That's changing how much how many different colors, how many different areas are being selected. Since I just want to select the screen, I can keep that a little bit lower. If I go higher, you see it eventually selects the phone itself, but I don't want that. I just want the screen, so I'll go ahead and keep that pretty. Now, after I do that, all I gotta do is click on anything else, such as making a new layer, and boom, I can see if I zoom in, those like diagonal lines mean that anything that's not in the diagonal lines is selected. So what's really cool now is if I create a new layer, Pick any color, any color, and drag and drop it from this little circle. It fills in my selection with a shape. Now if I tap the selection button again, I deselect, but I have this new shape here. So what that means is any new layer that I make, I can tap the layer and clipping mask this. We've done this in other tutorials. And I'm only painting on that shape. So what that means is I can now grab, let's say I just grab a big airbrushing soft brush, make it really big so I can kind of paint some gradients in there. And let's do some fall colors. Let's like, you know, do like a big orange here. And then maybe the orange kind of fades to a little bit deeper orange all the way down to like a maroon or like kind of like a more auburn, right? Um, and you see that it, because it is clipping masked, because it is clipping masked, it's only clipping to the shape. I'm gonna do that for literally every layer I make so that I always see the phone frame. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and blur that a little bit uh, using a little skill that we've used in others. So I go to Gaussian blur, I slide it a little bit so the really becomes a gradient, tap anywhere, apply. Now let's add some text. The basics of weather apps is that it has text, right? So Procreate, again, is not it's not the app that I would have as a go-to for this project, but I think we can play with a lot of illustration stuff with this. If I click on the wrench and I go to add, I can in, or add text and I click on that, now I can type anywhere. So let's say that it's a fall day, 
right now it's supposed to be like a high of 62 I'm looking forward to that later so 62 to get the little degree symbol um, I press and hold 0 and got that as long as the font has the degree symbol now to change it if I select the text I double tap there I can change the text right here up at the up at like right above the text or I can click on the AA in the top right of the keyboard the AA there and now I have this whole menu so I can pick my fonts I can pick my colors I can pick all the cool typography stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of my favorites right now, Avenir Next. Let's have it, this is the most prominent thing. This is the first thing that people wanna see when they open up a weather app is the current temperature. Let's make this a really light font, but really big on the screen. So let's go ahead and increase the size there. I'm gonna make it ultra light, and I'm gonna double tap to select it again and change its color to be white so it contrasts from my darker orange background. Boom, and now it's got like a 62 degrees right there. And I see what I got to do is I got to tap the layer and clipping mask it. And now, no matter where I move it, it will only show where my screen is. Cool. So I'm going to position that somewhere. Um, kind of interesting. Where, where, where does the eye look when we first look at the screen? Probably somewhere like upper middle. Um, and then what I could add more text. What I like to do, just so all the font and settings and colors are still there, if I just go to my layers, I swipe on that one and I duplicate that layer. Now I can transform it to be something different. So I'm gonna double tap it, and let's say that it's right now it's 72 in, or 62 in sunny. So let's go ahead and type out the word sunny. And then I'm going to shrink it up with the transform tool rather than just like unscaling a text and position it wherever I want it. So there it is, there's my, uh, my temperature, my current conditions. I'm gonna line that up with the edge of the two and the six. My temperature, my current conditions. Um, what are some other things that I could add? I could add, let's say, a really cool fall leaf. Now, I could try to draw one myself, easy, or I could quickly find an image, alpha mask it, and paint my own over that shape. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. If I open up Safari and I make any new, um, any new tab, I'm just going to Google fall leaf, P-N-G. And let's grab any of that fall leaf PNG and make sure that it's a transparent PNG. I kind of like that. It doesn't look like it's totally transparent, but I know how to select and erase things. So let's go ahead and download that. And it's okay because I'm not going to use it verbatim. I'm just going to use its shape. So I'm going to add in my photos. I'm going to go back to Procreate. I'm going to insert the image on a new layer. Scale it up a little bit. It's okay if it pixelates because, again, I'm, I'm going to paint my own. Now what I want to do is I want to just select a leaf. We learned that with the selection tool. If I click on the selection tool, keep automatic on, tap on the leaf, just part of the leaf inverts, but if I tap it and drag to the right, I increase that threshold, and I'm going to increase it all the way until the whole leaf is inverted. And now I have just that shape. So let's do that whole thing again, right? I make a new layer with that selection made, drag any color into that, and now I have that shape. So I can hide or even delete the photo layer, and now I have the shape of a leaf. So with that, I can alpha lock it, and then I can paint whatever colors I want. If the, like, if the background is a uh, dark orange, then maybe I wanna make this kind of like a lighter yellow, like the leaves that are outside on the tree right now. I can go back and grab maybe some texture brushes. We were using the grunge brush with the uh, pumpkin tutorial that we did back for Halloween. Do a little bit of texture there, and then maybe it, I give this also a little bit of a gradient to it, so maybe this also fades to a little bit of an orange. Just tapping in smaller little swipes and motions, and there I go. I'm gonna give it a little bit more contrast on it, a little bit more contrast towards the bottom. And if I want to, I can smudge, you know, I can play, I can, oop. I don't, I don't like how that smudge brush worked out. I'll undo that. Two finger tap, increase the brush size, and then maybe just swipe a little bit like that go back with the brush and add a little bit more texture cool so let's go ahead and put that layer behind my text and it should automatically clipping mask if it's beneath a layer that's clipping masked there it is shrink that up maybe rotate it in some way whoops undo undo i mean actually rotate it with the green one there we go rotate it maybe i've got that there what if I duplicated that and did a few smaller ones just to get like some interesting scale? 
Let's rotate it a little bit more so it's visibly different. And let's duplicate once more just to make another smaller one. I just like having like little repeating elements, playing with the scale, just you know, playing with my good old elements and principles. Boom. So I got that. Let's see here. What else does a weather app have? A weather app probably has um, some buttons at the bottom where I could press on text so I can go ahead and make a new layer. Put it above here. Or you know what? I, I just said how I like to make text. Let's go ahead and duplicate one of my text layers. Let's scale it. Let's bring it down. Whoop, let's, let's bring it down here. Let's double tap it to change what it says. Um, and let's see here. I'll, I could probably want to find the five day forecast. So I'll go ahead and type that out. The five dash day, not say day, F O R E C A S T. And then I should probably scale that text down after I select it all. Scale it down. Select it all, scale it down. There it is, five day forecast. If this is ultra light, maybe it should be like skip a weight. Let's do it like demi bold, shrink it down. Let's put that down here. Five day forecast. Um, let's duplicate that. And what would another button say? If I'm looking at the weather app, I have the five day forecast. Maybe I also want to see the radar or um, the hourly, hourly. I, I look at the hourly all the time. Oops, undo the scale. Zoom in so I can do a little bit more detail. Let's double tap on the text layer, change what it says, and this one's gonna say hourly. Almost forgot how to spell hourly there. Um, let's put the hourly a little bit over to the left. And now let's go ahead and make some buttons because we're just creating the visuals of what this would look like. So how about on a layer? beneath the text I create a selection but this time I'm going to select it with a rectangle and I'm going to put a rectangle around there and then let's do it like a, a dark gray if not all black drop that on there and then decrease the opacity of this layer click on the end on the layer decrease the opacity and now it looks like a button What I could do is I could duplicate that layer, drag the duplicate over to the right. So to lock those angles, by the way, I tap and hold with the second finger. And then just freeform scale the shape. And now I've got some buttons happening, right? So that's the basics of it. I could I could play around with different stuff. I could download like uh, uh, more images or like create more images to play with, but this is the basics of designing a interesting looking weather app or UI in Procreate using our more illustrative techniques. You know, if I wanted to, I could uh, add in a lot of the other techniques that we've talked about in this class or in my graphic design classes. Um, like we've done like the luminance brushes before. I could, you know, add some stars in. Maybe I'm like painting like a night sky scene. Uh, I could add a moon in like we learned from the radial design scene. Um, if I'm uh, creating a night scene, I could draw clouds. If it's cloudy, I could try to figure out drawing little rain strokes if it's rainy. You know, there's tons and tons and tons of different things that we could do uh, to create the preview or, or a mock-up of the UI of a weather app in Procreate. Um, so thank you for watching. Uh, take care.